Hi and welcome back. So here's the CPU as it stands and my focus today is uh, this thing up here. This is the 8-bit GPR PCB that I soldered up in the last video. The current design for the CPU has four GPRs so what I want to do is replace these two with four of these so I've got uh, three more boards to solder up. So I'm going to start by, uh, by pulling all of this out. So these two cables I'm pulling are the extension of the LHS and RHS bus just down to these pink lines now and this cable is the extension of the main bus and I need to do some disassembly on this board so that's the LHS and RHS outputs to the ALU over here that's the main bus connection to the ALU we need to find a new home for that these purple lines and the blue lines are basically the main bus snaking its way up through these boards and I'm going to have to break these connections. This white wire here is the assert to bus line for the constant register. It's the LHS assert lines. Main bus assert lines. Main bus load lines. And the RHS assert lines. I really hope after all this I can put it back together and have it work. Spent a lot of time on this, but uh, I'm quite keen to see the PCBs. That's the increment line used to increment the program counter. Need a, long, need a longer version of that as well. I've also spent a bunch of time soldering up three more of these. That's the LHS input. Should be able to uh, bend this around and fit it in there. Two need to go to ground, cut those in a bit. I have four of these. I should probably mention at this point that my plan is that in between the two rows of registers, which will be the GPRs here and the address registers here, 
there'll be a little PCB that actually makes all of these connections that come out the sides, which is why I put those on the right and those on the left. And that circuit will be the bus driving logic from up here, but there'll be some additional circuitry we'll have to build for driving the address registers. Actually be smart to bring the constant register down to the bottom at some point because all the connections for it are a bit more local. The uh, constant assert to bus line load line uh, not load for the register it's uh, load for the latches that hold the contents of the counter now one thing i can definitely tell you from the benefit of experience is here i didn't label up which of these two was power and ground and i didn't label up which of these pins was uh, was which of the control lines so i'm constantly having to go and check back to reference because on this new one they're all labelled up and it's a whole lot easier to work around them. Somewhere I have a very short Japon cable. Now I've got to connect the first eight pins here to either here or here to connect up with the bus. And this is the connection to the 8-bit bus for the ALU. Okay, the Interconnections for the 8 bit bus. I definitely need to work out a cleaner way of doing those at some point, preferably sooner rather than later. That should give us a working board for now. So these two need to be in ground. I've got control lines in each of these that needs to be distributed up here. I have made up this Japon cable, which basically each of the bundles are four wires here, goes to equivalent pins in each of these four subconnectors. So I should be able to connect all of our interconnects for the control lines on the registers just by plugging these four bits in. If it wasn't for Everything else I've just done, you'll be applauding how neat and tidy this is. Now these have got to go into here. This goes into the top pin of all the connectors, and that is a CERT LHS. I can't actually remember which way around LHS and RHS these are. Come out the opposite way as well. So I think that's correct. The next one is a CERT RHS. Then a CERT to main. I need to mark which is pin one on the end of these. Okay, now it doesn't start. There. Starts at one upwards. And so this one is load from main bus. So apart from all the mistakes I've inevitably made, this should power up and work. Okay, we should be seeing an assert to LHS and RHS going on here, which should both be this one. Just spotted, we haven't got power and ground in here. Okay, so we've got the asserts we expected there. LED is not should be on. So all eight bits of this register are on are on, so all eight bits over here should be on. Right, 
So that's the second bit, well, first bit of LHS. Should be showing 5 volts. Okay, we've got 4.2. The next bit also has 4.2, which is what we expect, which means that either one of the wires in the DuPont cable is busted or I've not soldered the connector to the bottom properly. Okay, let's take it all apart again. Right, let's go back to uh, to testing this one. Now, these LEDs haven't all lit up because the status of the latch chips is indetermined when we power it on. Last time we were actually quite fortunate that they all came on and we were able to see that there was a, there was a broken line over there. Otherwise it would have got a little bit confusing later. So let's step this forward. This is our load A instruction. So we're loading A with one so one has arrived in the constant register over here and when I clock it up to here it should go into A which is this first one here. So then we load the next two instructions are load B with one and load C with one. And then we go to add B to A then C to B, then yeah, A to C, and we're back to B to A again, and then the pattern becomes very complicated. And that is the same program we were running at the end of the last video, running on our new registers. I want to try and write something a little bit more interesting. So let's stop that. Okay, so I'd like to do a quick and dirty Fibonacci sequence. So, all right, firstly, let's move D comma zero, because we know we absolutely want that to be zero for our uh, ALU to work at the moment, just until we've got the logic section. And let's get 1 into A, and then we want B and C to be 0. So we can save a bit of time by copying D into those. Let's think about the sequence we want here. I want the result of the add to always be A, and I want to kind of scroll the historical numbers back. So B into C, A into B, and then add C to A. Get a bunch of knots in so we can uh, see the result. We're in 76 bytes at the moment. So if we take out a few knots, we should be able to fit four copies of it in. Oh, let's give that a go. Okay, let's give that a try. So initially we should load D comma zero. There we go. A comma one. And then move D into C and B respectively. So now we're going to move B into C, so we're not going to see any change from that. Then A into B, so B is going to become 1. We're going to add C to A, so we won't see any change there. But then once again we'll move 
B into C, so that one should drop down. Then A into B, so no change. Then we're going to add C to A, so that should become 2. B into C, no change. But then A into B, that becomes a 2. Now we add A or C back to A, so that should become 3. So we move B into C, A into B, and then we add C back to A. There, we've got five. So every three times we clock it. Now we could do this in one iteration per cycle if we had a separate destination on our add instruction, or we could do it with two if we were to roll the result around, putting the final result in different locations. But I kind of like the way the values are scrolling down here. So that's eight, next one will be 13. Twenty one, thirty four. Yeah, it's working perfectly. And then our sequence of knobs, our final value here is. 11101001 and that's equal to 233 which is the highest of the Fibonacci sequence we can fit into 8 bits. So we should keep going for a while and eventually we'll get to the end of our sequence of knobs and the whole thing will reset. That is absolutely awesome. I'm well chuffed with that. Now, I would say we're cheating a bit at the moment because we don't have any loops or conditions. We've just unrolled our, our operations as many times as, as was relevant and then replicated that into the 256 bytes of memory we can address. This is actually a 2K ROM, but we're only bringing across the bottom eight bits, which is why we're only accessing 256 bytes at the moment but we've actually got a full 16 bits we can bring across here and near future I'll be uh, working on the memory module and we'll get a full 64k in here but that will be a RAM and ROM split. The address register, I've got to show you something. The address registers and the GPRs are intended to sit side by side and obviously this was the first PCB I ever did. It works, it's not very neat and when I sat down and I did the GPRs, I thought about it and I went back and with just that extra little bit of practice on the design software, I thought I could make this a lot more compact. So this is the new version of the, the counter register. If you see, it's got all the same components on it, but I pulled the same trick as I pulled on the GPRs of putting the uh, current limiting resistors for the LEDs on the back and so I'm not going to subject you to the design process on this because it is exactly the same schematic as this one but hopefully the somewhat improved soldering techniques I've used on here will uh, will help us get this done nice and neat and then I'll be, uh, be putting a, a full set of these in and then we can actually start messing around with the full 16 bits of address and then of course we'll gain the ability to move data between the address registers and then we can start looking at things like a jump instruction. I am very very happy with this. These four circuits here are the first complete section of the processor. I'm expecting these boards to remain until the end now. We'll get a new backplane at some point. We'll get a new connecting circuit and new address registers. We've still got a bunch of work up here to do for driving the address registers. We've got to finish the ALU, put the proper memory in but uh, this is all going very well. Okay, thanks for watching and goodbye.